simply because it's real in your possession, right? ETF, sell that kind of garbage. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. That That is just a trust. So you need physical in your possession, which is real money. Yeah, really excited to talk about gold and silver and what's going on in the markets with you today. I think that before we get started, you know, this first quarter of the year, I think has really highlighted the importance of having gold and silver in your portfolio. So my first question for you, yeah, exactly. My first question for you is going to be, if you can explain your approach to the precious metals, gold and silver, and how investors can determine the level of exposure that they should have. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, a lot of it, it's so interesting because we've had gold and silver as real money for thousands of years, but the current system, which is debt-based, the governments and the central bankers really guided us away from us, uh, away from it at the same time that they're buying at hand over fist. So I would really say now, look, I've been studying currency since 1987. And at ITM Trading, we have a strategy what, that we look at historical patterns and therefore what is the next most likely outcome. So you've got to have gold and silver in your portfolio simply because it's real in your possession, right? ETF, sell that kind of garbage. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. That, that is just a trust. So you need physical in your possession, which is real money at a point where it should be now with inflation, obvious to everybody that central bankers have destroyed the purchasing power value of the currency. So that's why you have to have it. As far as the amount goes, that part depends on your personal level of comfort and what you're willing to lose and what you're wanting to protect. And then beyond that, do you want to get in a position to not just survive what we're going through, which is a currency reset, social, economic, and financial, but do you want to be in a position to take advantage of it? Because I believe, you know, I've been a stockbroker, I've been a banker, I've been in these markets on some level since 1964, quite honestly. And I've learned a lot over that period of time. But the system is so corrupt and fake right now. And what has to happen is a complete reset of the entire system. And that's why you need gold, but how much are you willing to lose? Because they can drive the stock market up to a trillion dollars, but those dollars have no purchasing power. Last time I checked, a trillion times zero is zero. So because of my personal background, I do not own any stocks, any bonds, any ETFs, any mutual funds, any annuities, any, any of those fiat money products, government debt-based products. I am all in on physical gold and physical silver, which I hold. The other part of that, I think it makes a whole lot of sense to hold the lion's share of your wealth in an undervalued asset that is in a long-term positive trend and the least amount of your wealth in an overvalued asset or instrument that's in a long-term negative trend. And so the real trend is not the stock market or the cryptocurrencies or anything else. It's the purchasing power of the currency. And officially there's three cents left but as inflation continues to heat up, because I, I do think we are in the beginning phases of the hyperinflation, then that will go to zero. When people lose confidence in the currency, it will go to zero. Then how much of your wealth do you want to be holding in these? Additionally, when I'm talking about value, because that's really what you want to know, where, where is it going to go, right? So what's the true value of an ounce of gold? That's also what I call the fundamental value because one thing I can guarantee you is at some point, all assets go to fundamental value. That's not complicated. What gets a little more complicated and a little more nuanced 
is knowing how to determine what that value is. Because you can't listen to the guys on Wall Street to tell you what that value is. They have an agenda. So <clears throat> since gold is real money, good money, and dollars, yuan, yen, whatever, is government-based money, the way to know how much this would go to, an ounce of gold would go to during a reset, it, I, I do it really simply because I'm not going to get you to the penny and I don't care anyway about that, is you take all of the debt that's been created because that's how dollars are created or any government-based money is created by debt. And you can use that as a proxy for actually how much currency and how much fiat money has been created because they've taken that data away from us. And then you divide it by all the gold that exists in the whole wide world, whether it's in ground or it's above ground because gold is indestructible. And that the last time I checked, it'll be higher now because there's more debt. But the last time I checked, that was like 13,500 bucks. So with spot trading around, you know, 1940, 60, 80, 2000, 5,000 even, right? It's a bargain. So how okay, much of I, that do you want to own? <laughs> exactly. So you've laid that out really clearly how people can start to approach that. There's a mm -hmm. lot of points that you made that I want to follow up on. And one of them is, you know, you mentioned the central banks, the government trying to, you know, direct us away from gold when they in mm -hmm. fact want it. And I think, you know, one of the things that we've seen over the last couple of months really in the headlines is of course the Russia-Ukraine war. And we've seen a lot of interesting developments come out of that. We've seen Russia setting the fixed price for gold, the US and others looking to block Russian gold transactions. So I wondered if you could speak about that and what that tells us about the value of gold. Oh, absolutely. Um, first of all, there is a certain cost because you can't push a button on a computer and create this, right? So the all-in mining cost is somewhere around, um, don't hold me to this because I have the data right in front of me, but somewhere around $1,268 an ounce. And then it'll go up from there, but that's where it is right now. So the all-in cost, the cost to mine, um, and then to turn it into coinage or whatever else you're gonna turn it into, that actually supports the underlying price in terms of fiat money of, of the gold. But what we've also really witnessed is the US can block the gold sales from Russia in within their realm of influence. So NATO, fellow NATO countries or allies, but you know, not in China, not in India. And India, frankly, has a history of going around sanctions and trading with countries like Iran, um, Turkey and Venezuela. And all these transactions have been done with gold because the currencies really have no value. And so what we saw Russia do in the buildup to it is accumulate, get rid of, divest themselves of a lot of dollars and build their reserves of gold. And so they are not suffering as much as they would have if they didn't have that gold because that gold is really their savings. Taking it down to an individual level because that's what I really use all of these lessons for because it doesn't matter whether you're a government, a corporation or an individual, the laws of economics really work the same for everybody. The governments and central banks just have the advantage that they could push a button and create fiat money out of thin air. But at the end of the day, they too have to go by all of those laws and restrictions. And so I would bring up in that same breath what we saw happen in Canada with protesters and how they were cut off from anything that they held in the system, just like Russia was cut off from what they held inside of the system that other governments could just take. Because the reality is, if you don't hold it, you don't own it, and your perception doesn't mean anything in a court of law. 